Chapter 14, A Destructive Force As head of my very own cooperative, I got to know firsthand what a destructive force, one capable of crushing any material state of well-being, impatience towards each other, and the breakdown of mutual understanding can be. Later, I learned that this is the very reason behind the failure of many collectives, and it can all start with a trifle. Indeed, that's how it happened with my first cooperative. Not only was it torn apart itself, but several families were destroyed in the process. Even today, I still don't know how to counteract this force which erupts spontaneously and is not subject to common sense. It all began when I decided to procure for our firm a country house with its own estate. I entrusted the details to our acting inventory and supply manager. He drew up all the necessary sale purchase documents while I went to take a look at the property. It included a large house, a fifth of a hectare of land, a bathhouse, garage, and greenhouse. We even got a cow and a flock of sheep in the bargain. Not exactly a priority, but my assistant said the owners had to go away and wanted to sell everything all at once. There was feed for the cow, and he had already managed for a woman from the village to come in and do the milking. A couple of days later, I called a meeting of the members of the cooperative to tell them about our acquisition. I explained it was intended for entertaining guests, as well as being a place where the members of the cooperative could relax and celebrate special occasions. We would all have to work together to fix up the place, do some renovations, and modernize the kitchen. The male half of the cooperative greeted the idea with great enthusiasm, but the women began whispering among themselves. It wasn't clear who the ringleader was, but my wife took on the role of spokesperson, saying the men had overstepped all recognized bounds of decency in respect to the women. Quote, we work with you as equals here, she declared. Quote, after that, we go home every day and clean house, cook meals, and take care of the children. Does that seem trifling to you? And now you want us, in addition to all that, to work our asses off at this country house of yours, do renovations, and then be cooks and waitresses for your receptions and drinking parties. That was when all hell broke loose. The woman poured out on the men all their personal and family grievances and other pet peeves. I realized this when one of them cried out, quote, all you do is fool around with dominoes and stare at the tube the whole evening long. I knew that none of the men at the cooperative played dominoes. It was her husband, a firefighter, who played. He didn't even work for us. But wives of the cooperative workers were especially pissed off. One of them stupidly blurted out to her husband in front of everyone, quote, you always smell of sweat and cheap cigarettes. He was especially fond of a certain brand called Prima, which I guess is their cheap brand. Quote, and now you're going to be smelling of cow dung too. A silence hung over the room. The husband took a deep gulp of air, blushed, and retorted, I shall especially smell of cow dung, especially so that you won't come near me, you slut. <laughs> At this, she burst into tears. The women gathered around to console her, and it made them even more pissed off. They started hurling all sorts of insults. 
One of our workers was named Jaina, well, whatever her last name is. He'd invented all sorts of devices to increase productivity and could fix anything that needed fixing. But now they told him, quote, we have inventors here, but it takes a whole year to clean up after them. Then the discussion turned to politics. Quote, Gorbachev goes on television, but it's his wife who makes all the decisions. I declared a recess. I thought everyone somehow might come to their senses. After the break, they all took their seats again, the outward restraint barely masking the inner tension. Once again, my wife spoke in the name of the women. With a contrived tranquility, she threw out a venomous ultimatum. Quote, of course, if you really want a country residence, go ahead. But not one of us women will step foot in it. In other words, it'll be yours alone. And since we share our funds in common with you, in common, and you have no right to spend them without our consent, as compensation, we demand you give us one of the company cars with the driver, especially for our household use. We'll take turns using it. Quote, great, came a chorus of male voices. Go ahead and choke yourselves. We'll give you anything you like as long as you promise not to show up there. Quote, they're bound to find some farm hussies out there, one of the women observed. Quote, let them look, retorted another. Those hussies soon will make themselves scarce. Who needs them? 